Hey everyone, I'm Tassinix, and welcome to Plotting and Scheming, covering Season 56, 3 vs. 3, Grand Arena Championship, Week 3. It is my very great pleasure to be joined by my co-host, Dagger, TJ, Sasha Aisha, and Fatal. Gentlemen, um, decent week for me. I had one freebie a rhodium opponent, two legitimate matches. I even won one of them, so two and one on the week. Uh, how about you, Dagger? How are you doing? I don't know what it says for the apathy of the average GAC player, but it was kind of fun and in interesting slash fun to see my uh, daughter uh, go to win my first two rounds when I didn't have time. <laughs> so I, I did play in the finals, and it was a pretty close, uh, pretty close one. I won by like I think forty banners, which is misleading because a couple of the fights I did were like, you know easy drops if i had like you know messed them up because mm -hmm. i screwed up my attack pattern right like I, I i knew something was in the back and it didn't save anything for it so i had to use something super chintzy mm -hmm. so yeah yeah i won by a bunch of banners but like man if any one of like the three fights in that back wall had gone south i was losing like five fights got you all right how about you tj how was your week man this is one of the reverse times i got daggered and, and but here's what dagger means, right? Because if you ever hear it and you talk internally PNS, we all know this, right? Ah, no, life, no, you life. can't say the acronym for the show like that. You can't, can't say it like I can't. that. I can't. I'll say it this because here's what it is: being daggered as your real life is so hectic that you can't get in to actually do the game correctly or like you want to. Yeah. So that's what that's what it's what being daggered is. I, I'm sorry, it's just what it is, and that's where I got caught. I would have been three and zero. Uh, we fought Bebe, so you know. Uh, Baby Patrol and the constant through Cop Patrol is the same thing. Uh, completely cheese the board. Respect. I'm not mad mm -hmm. at him for cheesing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I ran myself out of time because of meetings in real life. And so when I went to the back, I made some poopies from that because you're just going so quick trying to run. It's like, yeah, this might work. And it's like it didn't yeah. work. And so I lost because of it. And it's like there's nobody to blame. It was cool. He went through a strategy. But if I had that at the time, it would have been okay. So two and one, I'll take it. Uh, I just haven't actually, I've never actually daggered myself. And it's funny to have to bring it to that acronym, <laughs> but 100% got caught like that. Real life got the best of me. Fantastic. Sasha, how about you? How was your week? Uh, fun week. I actually got I got two legit matches against really good opponents. I went, I went three and oh. Um, and yeah, really, I, I got to enjoy it and sort of play with a, a level of both kind of like preparation and like uh, I can tell there's some pretty good thinking on the other side um, that made it. Yeah, uh, a lot, a lot of fun. Uh, so it was a good week. All right, good stuff. And Fatal, how about your week, sir? I actually don't fully remember. I want to say it was two and one. I think my first opponent just went like hyper efficiency and it was one of the all too common lately do you want to play to win or do you want to like run these interesting fights and i was like you know what i want the interesting fights so pretty much like threw that one in the first fight or two uh and then the last two matches were kind of unfair one-sided stomps so not exactly the most competitively satisfying week but I mean, it wasn't really the focus either i'm not too fussed about it Got the job done. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, it sounds pretty good overall, guys. It's uh, the end of the season now. We're, we're in the off week here. And, yeah, we all agreed here before we started the show that, you know, the meta-analysis we'll, we'll spend uh, a moment talking about later because there should be a little less to talk about since the season mostly solved itself out. Uh, but we will cover it, nevertheless, in a moment. I wanted to have us go ahead and get started on our favorite attack and defense of the week. So, um, I guess I guess it should be me to, to kick it off. Uh, let me check real quick. Because I, I usually stall and do this while you guys are talking. But it makes sense. I, I think uh, Bane Talon, first of all, this was the debut week for the Relic 9 Talon. Flawless, you know, she died exactly as she was expected to in every Queen Amidala fight. So that was really smooth. And then otherwise, yeah, that's that's the issue. Um, all the other fights really went to plan. We, we were pretty clean. We had one whole dropped attack the entire week on ground. 
and that was doing Afra against BKM Paz Sabine. That was interesting because this is my Afra BT1 triple zero with a great cron on it against a team that had a Relic 5 Sabine. And basically, once I realized that Sabine wasn't going to get one shot off rip, we had the opportunity to focus in on BKM and stop her from doing specials. So we used triple zero special there, tried to focus her down, almost got her. And then she went and then ended Afra, and it was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, and, and we ended up getting around it from there. But that's uh, that's that's about it for, for, you know, my attack of the week that didn't work well. But I guess that, yeah, the Bane thing was the only other interesting thing all week. Dagger, how about you? Uh... Yeah, so outside of, you know, Jabba being Jabba and, you know, Queen Amidala being Queen Amidala, it was funny to see my uh, Beck team, just Beck, Mace, Snips, hold two out of the three rounds. Um, just, it's amusing because it's like, <laughs> had nothing left, huh? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, <laughs> um, and then my, my favorite attack is uh, my opponent set a weird fleet comp, or a weird combination of, like, fleets. To where I f- had what did I, I had to empire? What did I have to empire? I think I ha- I ended up trying to empire uh, OG uh, fi- OG uh, bounty hunters right with the Razor Crest and Zanzu Blood Start with Houndstooth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it didn't go very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, I'm like, oh, this this should work. It works versus triple attacker, and then it's like, didn't chew through Houndstooth. Okay, I guess this isn't gonna work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then IG came in and just blew everything the fuck up, and it's like, all right, well, we tried. <laughs> I think that was my favorite attack, just because it was just like one of those. I don't want to call it hubris, but it's like he set like a prof and a triple attacker and net and uh, mal. So mm-hmm. it was like, all right, I don't want to have to radis the mal because I don't like that fight. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have just tried radising the mal because if that had worked, I could have just negoed the uh, negoed the the. the uh, the uh fuck words uh the executor yeah but you know it, it just is what it is um <laughs> that was that fight i was saying like i i lost the fight on fleet i'm just like i'm scrambling to do math to make sure that i could still win because <laughs> mm-hmm. i did fleet before the back wall Ooh, but anyway that is a gamble yeah yeah wow. yeah because i wanted to know how clean i had to be how many risks i could take um jeez but yeah, yeah, that was that's all I got. All right, fair enough. You know, you actually mentioning that reminded me of a couple of things. Um, I did have an interesting so a GG Stap and Thrawn I fought. Um, you know, specifically just trying to block out Wampa, right? DRBSF Malik took that down real easy, fifty five banners. And then twice this week I fought that Leviathan composition with B twenty eight, Sass, and Dagger up front. The first time I fought it, um, seemed Pretty okay. Actually, one of the very best, like, Chimera versus Executor outcomes. Like, 73 banners. Really, really good. And then the second time, they got favorable RNG. Like, I didn't dodge stuff well, the same way I did the well, first time. Did you? Did your TFP get a thermal? Because that's generally how you lose that fight. Um, I think so. I'd have to... I, I Both VODs I could check, but, like... Yeah, that, that sounds an awful lot like your TFP resisted the thermal in the first fight. Well, and the you know, second fight, he triggered Sass. That that may be the case, but, you know, I've heard that being the reason that you can get choked up when you're fighting the other more typical Leviathan compositions. And that's never really cost me, I think, in the same way that I got blown out on this one. Because nah, I got, you got lapped you got about. those poopies. I, I got that fight. lapped you got the about. So I yeah, thought it was yeah. really interesting yeah. because when I went and filtered on the results for that, I set up the comp the same way, and they take a full complement of, uh, of reinforcements, right? That's going to be um, Darth Maul ship, yeah, C- Scimitar, Palpatine shuttle, Mark VI, and who is it? The tank. Um... No, sorry, Fury. Fury is the other one. And, yeah, when I check that out, it's like 37% win rate for Chimera. It's disastrous yeah, for Chimera. Yeah, so I have a guy that has that in my arena, and the hard fail condition is if you get a thermal on your TFP. Why? Like Why is that win. specifically so damn? Because, it, because TFP takes his turn uh, and lets their... Uh, 
their uh, I'm playing, their, I'm, uh, their Dorito dagger or whatever jumps the line on the turn order, and then their tank gets to jump the order as well. I think I think you're right, and, and I also, think it's even worse than that because I think Vader also got jammed up because I remember Vader yeah. going ahead of I. Like, Vader attacked, needed to attack before he needed to dispel, is what I'm saying. That's the situation yeah. I got myself into. And uh, then the other ships went, we were out of phase. So, yeah, definitely getting thermaled, getting dazed had something to do with it. But it was, I, I've been thermaled. I've been dazed before against, you know, other compositions. Yeah, Fury, doesn't pun Fury doesn't punish you the way Dagger does for that slow No, start. yeah, yeah, I freaking believe Cause, you. Because Fury I doesn't do any you. damage. Yeah, because if you actually look at it, Fury is a product of keeping your tank alive longer mm -hmm. and stalling the fight out to get the ultimate. If, you were, if you're looking for damage, Fury is not in the equation. Fair. Very fair. Okay, uh, TJ, how about you? Favorite attack and defense of the week? Plus, I want to make sure I just, like, comment this out, right? Um, and This is how I know Bebe is a friend of the show and watches. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he put the BKM team in the back wall. Your setup, the whole thing like that, uh, and, and you know what's funny that kills it? Still wrecks the shit out of it? Hmm. Seer. Monster Quick, I just saw it 100% when it took it, and yeah, that was that was really cool. Just but yeah, so it's it like, down. yeah, man, it, it pushes it. But it was cool to see the fight because I really had to like figure out what I was going to invest, and Seer just you know pummels the shit out of that. So it, that really was quick cool. question. Is Seer the best Triple Omi character in 3v3? Is that Seer team the best Triple Omi team? Like not Datacron dependent. Like I know, I know. I'm trying to think it out, and probably so because it doesn't care about turn meter. It it you try to do insta kill stuff. It talk. It, it prob it's also probably. It's also basically a three man team. That's what I'm saying, right? I'm thinking about it. And it's like especially when you put Cal the intensity, uh, the intensity right now, and, and then if you add a Cron, I probably say it's one of the best because it can hit literally up to a GL, so Ray or something like that, and then down the line, almost anything you try to throw at it, it has a measured account for, and especially in GAC, that Malakos ramp is so ridiculously strong, you're just waiting, and you can't revive, right? So it's it feels like the most Swiss Army uh, secure team that's out there. So yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a high banner offensive team that beats everything that's not a GL, pretty much, and some GLs. Yeah. I mean, that's, that feels confident. So, anyway, anyways, it was just a thought I had this week when I was no, I, I on defense. But then when I pulled it for offense, I'm like, man, I'm just looking at my opponent's board. It's like, this beats everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's it's one of the best. There. So, and then favorite attack. Um, and it's not going to be GL stuff like that. I was telling the team about it. And the one thing that was the favorite was I got to pull the ship twice with Star Killer. Coolest damn thing that I didn't get to record. Um, it was against Saw, funny enough. And what, what else made this cool? is I watched Kyle literally from 100% protection, and uh, I don't think he was debuffed, but took my Mary Jade completely dead. First hit, oh, he, wound, oh. he wound up deleted. Oh. It was the coolest <laughs> shit I had seen, right? It, so it he pummeled with the – you could see that there was the uh, debuff applying, right? So all of these things went into play with Saw, with Krex, and then you had the big bomb from Kyle. Coolest shit watching my, my – he's like, where did my Jade go? Jeez, Why didn't she want to play the game? I, I also hear tell it helps to not have an R5 Mary Jade. Ooh, yeah, that is tough. It, it's, no, mine's R7, buddy. So you might want to check that one again. But, but, <laughs> I just but know, it, I just but, know that you, right, but I just you, know that you you're a oh boy. Oh, yeah, I just assumed. Like, damn. Oh yeah, yeah, that's fine. I mean, but you know, let's let's talk about time and portum. Uh, so when we're looking at this though, so watching that delete was cool. So watching the effect of the cron, but watching my Star Killer come back, pull the ship, and then there was I think two people left, and I got to pull the ship again. Coolest shit I've actually seen. I've only seen that on Reddit or some people posting on it, mm -hmm. but I didn't get to record it. Otherwise, I would have said, let's watch that shit because it was cool as fuck. It was only a minute and 15 second fight. It wasn't long, yeah. but watching pull ship, pull ship, and everybody's dead, it's like, yeah. I you tried it again round three, and no, uh, I played it correctly, so no ship pull. I need Very that nice. gif in my life. Just the ship Of him pull? pulling the ship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Start really pulling the ship, them not being dead. He's like, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hey, two electric boogaloo pulls ship yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, I've never gotten to work that out, but yeah. And I was like, oh man, this is a two time ship pull. It's like, bitch, you thought you were gonna live? No, here's one more ship for you. Very nice. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, Sasha, how about you? Favorite attack yes. and defense of the week? Yeah. So uh, as, as I thought about it, I decided to go with a little bit of a recurring theme on this one. So um, 
The first was an attack uh, in an earlier match of mine, uh, which was a little bit of a learning for me, and it was around the strength of Morgan Elsbeth, I think, and uh, uh, mm. the potential there with some Night Sisters. And this was, uh, I faced an Asajj, Morgan, and Spirit Squad. Uh, I think it was Michaels. Um, it was uh, really well modded, right tank relic and everything on Morgan. And then uh, I brought, you know, never having faced it before, I thought of a few different things. I'd seen a different comp uh, that I brought Iden against, but this one I, I decided to go CLS, Han, and Chewie. And I have, just kind of for context, I have a ton of respect for Spirit as a character. I think it's super cool. Um, it's, it's one of the rare characters still left in the game that can ignore defense. And I've always been a huge fan of the defense stat. Like, I've always gone for mm -hmm. defense secondaries, mm -hmm. um, you know, even for Datacrons. And now I'm just a huge believer. So the ability to just take damage mitigation off the table um, for a character that, like, one well relic and then gets, uh, you know, offense benefits off of Morgan's Unique, gets, um, you know, 30% offense from Asajj leadership, plus double, it, like, 100% offense with starting with Foresight. Um, I was nervous about it, but I'm like, okay, perfect. CLS Honchui, that's the way to do it. Just blitz out of the gate. Um, I brought an attacker Kron. And so it's like, all right, these guys will just be going all day. Like literally I get a bonus first move where Han goes twice, then gets to go again, calling Chewy, who gets to go twice. And it's like, all right, spirits out of the game. And then I'll, I'll whittle these guys down. But the claws in Morgan's unique, uh, which is like effectively as good as almost any, like most 3v3 leaderships, um, that says the first time that a night sister falls below 20%, that they get stealth, uh, they get uh, Morgan's 20% defense, but they recover, all night sisters recover 30, or they, that night sister that's impacted, and Morgan get 30% health and protection at 30% turn meter. So I just laid into spirit, and I'm like, oh, this is perfect, spirit's definitely dead. No. Um, like I got it close to red, but then it heals back up at 30% health, 30% protection. Um, and now Morgan's taunting. Um, I was incredibly lucky to be able to get through it. I didn't get through it on one shot. That was just because of RNG around targeting. And I say that because like so much respect for spirit on this, like spirit got to go once, uh, targeted my Chewy, hit it for like, you know, 145 K and Chewy sitting there in the red spirit mm. got to go again. Uh, and I just got lucky with targeting. I had no tank or anything. My Chewy's just hanging out there. Of course, the other two, thanks to Chewy, Han and CLS both have guards. So there's no crit critting that can happen. And from one reason or another spirit targets CLS twice and like, it's him for, you know, like 50 something K 60 K in non crit twice, but he's able to survive it. And I'm able to take the thing down. I'm able to get it out. But I came out of that, like, first of all, like, thinking I was really lucky that was not a good comp to bring in. I underestimated that unique and just totally loving spirit. So that was the attack that I enjoyed the most because it was eye opening and like, uh, like cool validation on spirit. Then favorite defense. My favorite defense was uh, a leaderless one that I set, which was um, an Acolyte, which I was all excited about again because Morgan's unique. I took my Acolyte to, uh, so yes, I'm with the Night Sister Acolyte lead. Uh, and I took her to like R8, and she's loaded with like defense uh, just to make her thick. Uh, Morgan, who I sped up to like 350 something, nice. uh, you know, it's leaderless, so there's no extra 30 speed. So there's perhaps some vulnerability with Bad Batch there because you can see an Echo get ahead without an Asajj or Talisman leadership speed bonus. And Spirit is the third. And Acolyte lead for no reason other than like, okay, if Morgan goes first against like a Darth Revan squad, who I heard a bunch of people mention, they, oh yeah, you can just take a DR and junk against this. If Acolyte is stealth out of the open, you know, then Sure, they can get Morgan, who will taunt. Uh, that will fear Acolyte. But Spirit, because you weren't able to fear the leader, Spirit's there and can one-shot stuff. And it got uh, it got a couple of holds. Uh, I don't know what it was against. I haven't seen the data yet. Um, but uh, actually, I do know, uh, I think Michael had mentioned one thing he tried was just Talzin Night Sisters. And he said that they they just lit it up. Uh, yeah, and there's a decent amount of health recovery under um, Morgan's Unique. So that... Uh, yeah, star of the week for me or the most interesting character was uh, Night Sister Spirit on both offense and defense. So so I was going to say the couple times I've fought that team it just seems that if she isn't like super fast if Morgan herself isn't super fast, then you just crush Asajj 
and then just you know kill spirit when you can and then deal with her uh you know morgan last but you're the you would have been the first one i would have seen that would have been something like 350 so that's speed sets yeah, uh, yeah, I speed set on Morgan. Uh, mm-hmm. I've got her, yeah, decked out at, let me take a quick look. I've got her decked out 354, so that's a plus 169 speed. Um, I did that originally thinking I was going to throw a Saj, uh, which yeah. gives you 30, and so 384, you're getting out ahead. And with the Ami on Morgan, like whoever she targets, she, that she's taking their turn meter to zero because she also inflicts stagger um, and, along with uh, mass assist. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, I did it also thinking it could be cheeky and that a really thick Acolyte, which a high defense tank Kron under that was bringing my <laughs> Acolyte like up to like 83% defense. And it's like, you can't get to him. She's got like, you know, decent health. Uh, reality, I'm sure I'm overestimating it, but it just seemed like a fun new toy. So yeah, that was, that was my good time. No, oh, that's a good one. Thanks for sharing it. Fatal, how about you? Favorite attack and defense of the week? You may be on mute and not know it. I am on mute. Aha, uh, welcome back. Defensively, I don't know that I have anything too interesting to say. It was mm-hmm. just one person cheesed and, you know, got like a minus 29 banner split. And then the last two people could only clear half my board. So it was just kind of, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it was, again, just not a very balanced week either way. It was... Mm-hmm. Yeah, defensively, kind of whatever. And then the that offensive fight, I would say, is uh, the last fight of the season. Uh, yeah, they could only clear half my board. And I kind of, after the I fought the cheese person, because I was like trying to be responsible. I'm like, oh, I gotta, I have to hold Ray so I could kill JMK Padme. Uh, I just said, screw it, and just started like posting pretty much everything I could, with the exception of, like, I think I could post at the Eternal and Treya. Don't ask me what I'm going to use against, like, Gideon. I don't have an answer for that, but, I mean, the answer might exist. But, um, yeah, it was just, like, I- I'm-, I'm approaching the point where it's, like, okay, I'm-, I'm posting the hardest defense possible, and I'm still not getting holds. Or the hardest defense that I can think of, possibly. Yeah. I'm still not getting holds, so I'm just, like... I, I kind of entered screwed mode, and that's where I got those last two matches of the season where they just only cleared half my board, and then I just cleared the other half that didn't have JMK on it. But that last battle that had JMK, uh, I did, you know, I, I killed the nine ground teams and ships and got my win. And then it was like 15 minutes left in the round, and I was like, I don't know. I got some teams. They're not going to beat this JMK, but fuck it. I'm just going to throw stuff in. Mm-hmm. And uh, sent Starkiller with a Vsauce crown and almost won. I Um, actually saw that. That was it. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but I can see where it's like this. This could go somewhere. Yeah, I'm not I'm not saying it's real. Yeah, but there's a spark there, right? There there is at least enough that it's like. Because I th- that this was zero foresight, zero prepper planning. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I literally just like I, I brought Darth Vader and just like threw that was so cool how you handled that. I liked that. Well, uh, DV Starkiller for me has always been like I, I don't remember where, but I saw like a whole bunch of different places of people like, man, Starkiller versus Ray hasn't worked in like a year. And I was like, what? What, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, the, you know, Holdo, sure, I get that, but mm. I was like, what are you talking about before that? And I realized. It was probably because Ray was on the evasion crumbs, what the deflection crumbs, right? Ooh, and so everyone's yeah. like, "Well, Starkiller like, can't beat that." But I'm, you just flip from EP Mara to Darth Vader, and like, nah, man, we're we here. We do physical in this house. Like, no, you're you're still dead, and we basically just right. I mean, like this mm-hmm. year more than any other year feels like a year where if you just like. You know, if a team says, haha, I have infinite crit damage, and you say, yeah, but I brought roughly 100 crit avoid, what about that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. They, don't, they don't really have an answer. You're just kind of vibing a vanilla team. And if a Ray says, haha, I have 100 deflection, and you say, I don't do special damage anymore, they don't really have an answer. And so, yeah, you know, DV, uh, Darth Vader Starkiller is something I pretty much always kind of kept back pocket since Starkiller came out. 
I do actually I, appreciate that they're doing that with crons, though. Like, there, there are ways to solve these crons, even though they're obnoxious. Uh, mm-hmm. While we're talking about crons specifically with Darth Vader and Starkiller, though, mm-hmm. uh, if you're like me, you might get the idea in your head of, like, ooh, there's an attacker double attack. Yeah. You're, you're doing Merciless Massacre. It's, like, already a bunch of attacks. And then I can, like, re-attack on... Um, the Merciless Massacre attack. And then Starkiller could re-attack on the re-attack on the re-attack. Oh, no. I know what you're going to say. What's going to happen? Yes. Uh, You press basic once, and then he automatically basics again, and that's the end of Merciless Massacre. Oh, no. Yeah, it breaks it. Yeah. It's it's fun. That's actually fantastic. That is forbidden. (laughs) That is the forbidden. (laughs) Oh, my feet. That... Didn't even think of the interaction, but the moment you said the attack again, I'm like, that doesn't sound like it works. And then you confirmed for me, like, man, the amount of rage I would feel if I did that. Just, oh, I, I, I slammed that shit like week one, day one of this season, and Merciless Massacre ended immediately. And I was like, oh, I'm not winning this man. fight. I'd be so fucking mad. <laughs> I Intuitively, it makes sense, but man... Yeah, CG, no, it's CG, not, it's CG not intuitive. It you had to sit there and think about it. You had to start pointing it out. Once you took me, you know, on, on the journey from A to Z, once you got me to about B, I was like, oh, I can see C coming. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, <laughs> I, I thought about the fun parts and not the, the meat and potatoes of like, hey, yeah, <laughs> but I kind just goes away the moment you push the button. It's not until end of turn. Um yeah. But anyway, so yeah, but my, the whole point of what I was trying to say with this is I brought Darth Vader and like I spent a minute after that fight looking at the Sith roster and I don't know that there are actually any Sith right now where if you're like, hey, I'm going headhunting for JMK, get get me the best Sith possible. I'm not saying Darth Vader is good there, but I'm like increasingly not convinced that there, you could do much better. Like I'm probably just going to try Malak next time and just... The only two that popped into my head are Maul and Sidious. Because Sidious has, like, an infinitely stacking lead. Um, and then Maul, Darth Maul offers, like, evasion. But, yeah, Darth Vader is probably just the best because he gives the extra offense. I basically no, 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 no. did nothing with his turns. So, if I tried Darth Vader again, I could actually, like, you know, save Merciless Massacre until the time where I went for the kill window. Or I'm just going to try something like Malak and just try to get three drains off and just tax him out that way and see if that doesn't put me in a better position to win. Okay. That's a good but one. But yeah, I don't know. That's, uh... It, it was a cool little Hail Mary kind of sign of life out of nowhere that is entirely probably reliant on Visa's crown and so will not exist in three months' time. Okay. Well, that seems like a natural transition into our next section then, gentlemen. Uh, we're we're kind of combining for this week meta-analysis and our predictions for the next three versus three. So just briefly about meta-analysis stuff, uh, not a lot of broken ground, not a lot of new ways to handle the same teams that we've seen this month. Uh, with But just a, just a quick note here on Queen Amidala. I did get to debut my Relic 9 Talon this week, and not that that makes a big difference over Relic 8 in terms of efficacy. Like, I think you'd still win the fight either way. But just having that extra little bit given over to uh, Bane, I was happy to have. It worked exactly as planned. They, uh, she, you know, Talon died exactly as expected, exactly when needed, and you know, we just clobbered everything for like 55. It was great. But I know Dagger had a point that he wanted to bring up on this, fighting uh, Queen Amidala. Oh, yeah, just the support Kron giving Pow just a bajillion extra damage. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I, I There's already a failure rate with Bane versus, Q, versus uh, QA, so I don't know how much this... This was one fight I watched, and Pow just kind of, like... It, it was Bane's set, so again, it goes back to the other guy didn't die fast enough, right? Hmm. So, again, I don't know how much of this was the same problems that Bane has when you take Malik or Set and they just don't fucking die. Um, because, you know, they dispelled the taunt and then Pow just killed Bane. <laughs> hmm. I, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know how much this falls within the window for the natural failure rate of the, the matchup. 
versus what how much of it was the actual cron difference because i've fought the pal cron and i fought not the pal cron uh but bulk with with galactic republic in mm. in in 3v3 and the pal cron is just like head and shoulders above the other cron because of the true damage so mm. i i don't know it's probably better than like the bulk galactic republic crons but yeah i don't know if it's better than the actual like pal cron overall mm -hmm. but i think it's a reasonable replacement yeah i've actually been running both this season and set 16 has easily outperformed set 15. okay fair enough yeah what, like i said I, I only had like on that, one, sorry, but, exactly sorry. one so i'm glad that you have more than that so i'd be more than happy to hear about your experience mm -hmm. yeah no it's uh I, I i can't rule out the possibility of player skill issue um, but let, let me. I should have the insight link. Isn't that always no, the I don't problem? think insight's updated yet. I I checked it. No, 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 not, not for week three, just for the whole season. For oh, the oh, week sure, week. sure, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. All right, I'm posting it. Mm -hmm. But basically, the idea is, like, you can open up the matchups, and it'll, you'll see, like, when he, you know, not that Palkron didn't have some successes, but like, you'll see Bane. Beat my pal Cron, then it beats I sixteen. But I do okay. think that a part of it is part of what makes set set sixteen interesting to me isn't necessarily just the power crit damage. I, th I think it's a uh, multifaceted. That I think Amadala with the level three amp ag effect is actually just like really really juicy and probably one of the more sleeper effects of the set in terms of how much that can really check you. Mm -hmm. uh, so she damage level three, right? Yeah, the the two percent max health. Yeah. Um, no, that like, okay. Consider this: if you make a decoy, and Amadala has a GAC Omicron that says, "You hit this decoy, you get two debuffs." Uh, that's four percent max health every time you touch that decoy. On top of how many buffs and debuffs mm -hmm. they generate, the fact that those buffs are creating debuffs that also are taxing you. And it really just creates this extra layer of, like, you're just in this attrition fight, and they're just boiling you. Like, if we were in a cheese meta, which we're, we're probably about to be, actually, if, if not this 5v5 like season... feels going then, back that way, yeah. Yeah, if it's not this 5v5 season, if it's next 5v5 season, I think Amidala Amplify Agony will fairly easily justify itself just because of the potential banner tax that it can represent just constantly poking you with this you know i know two percent doesn't sound like a lot but i'm really trying to convey the sheer amount of times that they hit you with it that it could check you and well, then and there's plenty defense. of debuffs on that team to boot i don't i don't think it's i don't think it's that big of a stretch really i think that's a really good well, that's idea. what i'm saying they naturally generate a lot of debuffs and mm -hmm. then you have the decoy natural debuff and then you have um the set six or the S16 level 6 provided debuffs to boot is just... Mm -hmm. It comes together really nicely, and then... So yeah, you kind of have this multi-pronged, like, if you can manage to get your defense up pretty high, that, you know, I swear half of set 16 theory crafting starts with, okay, I, I did this, like, I got this really cool thing to work. And people will be like, okay, show us the crown. And then <laughs> th there's going to be at least a 200% defense behind it, probably. Probably. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um... But right, you know, it's just a little bit more versatile and a little bit trickier, I think, than Palkron, which is, you know, still dangerous, but kind of a more known quantity at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, this is the last gasp, right? I mean, certainly for three versus three, uh, we have it for this next five versus five season, and that's it. No more set 15. So. Well, yeah, and I do share your thoughts about the, if not this set, the next set, because... But we know we have a pretty good idea of what the next set's going to hold. They've already said Night Sisters, mm. and I think it's pretty fair to assume we're going to get Rebels or Rebel Fighters because of Luthen. And it's also pretty reasonable to expect us to get Empire, Imperial Trooper, or Imperial Remnant because of the two new characters that just came out. I know that uh, What's His Nuts just got a Kron with this set in the Attacker Kron, but it's an Attacker Kron, so maybe they, maybe they give it to us next set, maybe they don't. But yeah, just. Like like Fatal said, anytime they put defense on Krons, my immediate fear is that we're just going to enter this like cheese meta or you know efficiency meta over again because it's like how do you kill X Y Z with three hundred and fifty percent defense? Yeah. 
Yeah, Bulk at least had Bulk at least had the side effect of you have it on offense and defense. Whereas, don't get me wrong, offense defense is great to use on your offensive teams, but the value of it is much higher on defense because mm-hmm. it tends to block out counters or really punish people trying to go in cheap. Whereas the bulk does does something similar, but it's just on offense, especially on a level three, right? It's just like, all right, cool. I just have all every team just has this now. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Not every team is going to have 300, 350 percent defense. I only have one super high defense cron out of the whole set 16, and I had to re-roll my ass off for it. But it, it is a banger, though. It's like 388 percent defense. <laughs> Uh, I can actually go check mine. I think my highest is like 210. Like, my highest is like not high at all. I put love into it. I won't lie to you. Um, I believe you. Yeah, yeah. Now, our our last specific meta-analysis point before we start thinking about how we'd be handling the start of the next three versus three is just on Gungans. Um, So we won't be coming back to set 15. And when we come back, are they still on defense? For you guys, or are you looking forward to trying them on offense? Because I feel like the benefits granted from the shield generator are kind of like a cheat code for several matchups offensively. Um, but there's still probably a lot of merit in maybe at least like a top wall presence for that team on defense. Well, it's a net, it's a natural predator for teams that have insta kills. Like if somebody puts Trey on defense, yeah, or somebody puts like Jabba on defense. I was watching some of the CP guys using it pretty effectively on offense Mm -hmm. and watching like Arnold use it versus me uh, because somebody sent me the clip. I was like, oh, yeah, see, this cron didn't really matter Um, just because Jabba couldn't kill them. Like they don't take thermal damage. They don't get instantly killed off of his ult. (laughs) Like, (laughs) so I, I, I. I think it's highly likely it'll be on offense, and I know I mentioned pre-show that in 5v5, uh, these Gungans are going to be able to use the support crime pretty effectively between Boss Nass and Jar Jar's debuffs because they have Booma and Tarples on their team to like stack the offense and do a bunch mm-hmm. of shenanigans. In 3v3, I wonder how the double support, how the support cron, like it's two support plus a tank generally. Maybe t- maybe if you put an attacker there, but it's like. Most of Boss Nass's damage is from health percent. Most of Jar Jar's damage is, uh, you know, well, Jar Jar doesn't do that much damage, if I'm being honest. It's mostly just chip damage over and over and over and over and over. Yeah, right? But that, just... Dude, that, that support long text with the max health damage level three oh, for freaking Nass. The wrath of Nass shall be upon you yeah. all. There will be no peace. Yeah. The jowls not... of death and destiny. Well. Uh, you're, you're, it's definitely hyperbolic. <laughs> yeah, T- Tass is a uh, boss Nass believer, but didn't pull a three thirty like a bitch. So it's true. obviously, not boss Nass does not love him back. back. It's true. Yeah, so obviously, boss Nass doesn't love him back. You just know that's an unreciprocated love or unrequited love. No, but all jokes aside, it's both. Yes, all jokes aside, I think I think it'll I think uh, Gungans will definitely be worse next three v three on defense, but how much worse is to be seen. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? I'll say, I mean, the typical way I would play something like this, and I may reserve them for offense, but is that they'll still have meaningful value in week one of the next season, a uh, 3v3 or whatever. Until it's figured out, people will probably bring the same types of counters. Uh, and I actually find there being value in anticipating what somebody's going to use because it helps you set up your back wall. Um, and, and so they feel like week one, a bottom front team and quite possibly off the bar board week two and three um, enabling you to bring over like perhaps a, a GL uh, to defense when you can probably, like you said, just kind of game the system a bit with, some of the mechanics around um, Gunkins, you know, if they, they can take out a Jabba really cleanly and not all of us uh, slightly looking your direction, Fatal, can one shot a, a Jabba with our night sister. So like me not being comfortable in my ability to do that, uh, I can see Gunkins being my go-to. Fair. I think it's, it's pretty simple to say, like, one of the key ones, right, that I think everybody's using in one form or another, Tash, you were a big proponent of it, was Padme. 
Pratt has such a strong Kron this mm. time that that's gone. But the yeah. other team that's still there and I still think will be relevant and I think what it'll become is the new Treya staple killer. Um, Tuskins, you know, def- generally hold that weight of like, well, they're going to put Tuskins on defense. Everybody knows that Tuskins is the way, but but there's more counters figured out for that. Whereas Treya still has a strong place to kill Gungans. Uh, whatever set you try to do, because there's only three of them. So to, to what um, Dagger said, I think is relevant, right? They obviously have a lot of variants. So what um, Sasha's talking about is true. But when there's only three, no matter what you try to do, you can't put the big punch behind what Treya can just deflect, right? Be it the Savage lead, be it the Treya lead. That, uh, when Dagger talked about the strong three-team combo when it comes to Omis, strong two, Treya. Treya still is, is a safety net and so many things, especially in threes, because Treya-Savage is a monster combo. Defense or offense, you have to account for it, so... If I had to guess, it'll become like a Treya staple. It's like, I don't know what to do against this. What's going to be something strong enough to take this out? And Treya, with the least amount of things happening to you, can take that damage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Take that. Another thing, too, is, as it was said, um, because because they, like, and Sasha mentioned this, too, depending on what your opponent's planning to use against it, there's a lot of, it, we'll call them cheap. Things that could be the triple OMI team next 3v3. And I don't know how much you want to trade your triple OMI team for somebody's zero OMI team, considering it's, you know, the board is 30 teams and we have like eight GLs. And do we have like 10? I don't know. You know what I mean? It's like, man, if you're getting, if you're letting your opponent use a team that they might not otherwise use to beat your Gungans, that's just not a place I want I, to be in. If I, if I had to guess, and I know you have it on the list, uh, I know Gungans are there, and I understand why they're the unknown, because there's with the fives, the full power of the fives, man, Gungans are going to be awesome. Their RNG level of it's nothing to kills a GL because it death marks, or whatever it's going to do that's going to be crazy, it's cool. Because that support's going to make those things really hurt, especially Tarples with his slaps are going to make monster damage. Um, and threes, and I know it's on the list to talk about, it, to me it's queen. Um Queen with Qui-Gon and Pow, as Fatal said, he alluded to it now, but even more so when there's less competitors to come out and catch it. Man, Queen with those super supports to that Pow hit, because he is just so strong, man. And, and the cool thing is, we talked about it early on when Qui-Gon came out, and I said this because Dagger and I were talking about it. Qui-Gon has multiple ways to build and does different things, because what people don't talk about, and Fatal did, is if you build that the damage man, you build Qui-Gon as your damage dude, and it's still support setup, Qui-Gon will beat the shit out of you. Flat out. True. It's he's a, he's such a good character and so really built into this team. For a team of threes, man, she's the one that scares me as far as you uh Dagger said it too. That's a three-man team. It's just like with Seer, it's like those three are monsters together. Mm-hmm. You can't mess with it. It's going to be a sad day when that team gets a fourth or a fourth and or a fourth and fifth. You shut up. It, you don't do that. To, you don't do that to that team. The team is special. No, I know. But it's just like Treya kind of yeah. got a fourth with Savage, right? Like, yeah. I'm just saying they're eventually going to give it a fourth and then it's going to be better in fives. But, yeah. you know, there, there's something I don't I don't want to say romantic, but there's something interesting slash like fun about them actually having like teams, maybe not designed specifically for 3v3, but being designed right. to be a three character unit right well, like see dls han chewy the triumvirate right like it's always interesting to see them kind of try for 3v3 if that makes sense and it's pretty cool it's based on the movie at least right it's pretty damn cool to see thematically it holds weight right you I mean, have the dude who's the, the powerhouse on, but i take your point but that's but that's it's cool though it's like seeing it and it's like man that's your childhood relived and it actually holds how strong they actually are hmm I don't. I also don't want to live in a world where the Queen Amidala team isn't good because holy shit, is that team like power crap? Yeah, like the three piece is so fucking good, even without the cron. The three piece is so fucking good. yeah. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's kind of like how you had Dash Vandor L three a few years back that was supplanted as one of the no. weakest teams on your defense oh, yeah, by yeah. you know Resistance Hero Finn, you know Finn Finn Poe or whatever yeah. nest fin bros whatever and then now that is supplanted by something like this like 
I mean, well, even no, no, even no, no, if no, it, no, even no, if it isn't the no, apex no, no, performer that it has been with set fifteen gone, I think it's definitely a defensive staple. None of the teams you listed were ever a top three defensive. No, no, but in terms of your concern about power creep, this is definitely way better no, no, than no, no, any of those other about, teams. So no, like, I, I feel like it'll always be all right. My, my problem was less about the power creep and more just like, man, can you imagine a world where Queen Amidala isn't like? Can you imagine a world where Queen Amidala is a mid team? It's uh, it, it's just right? true. it's such a complete team. So yeah, I think that's to Dagger's I mean. point, to Dagger's point, we're talking about you can di- throw in some other, you can sprinkle some other characters. Mm-hmm. The only one that comes to my mind as a GL level is Leia with R two and Drogon. It's mm-hmm. so complete. And uh, here I'm going to spar some things, and you have such a big uh, faction like Galactic Republic. It's like I'm going to go pull this. Beck doesn't work there anymore. Let's put Beck in here. That'll be fun. Oh, mm-hmm. Cam could be good here as as Fatal talked about. Ooh, we're going to put Cup. It's like, yeah, I have a full team. What kind of sprinkle do I want to add? And that team yeah. is just so complete that it's like it's just added seasoning to what is an already yeah. beautiful dish. Who's ready to get their booty holes pile driven by cup? And man, that's gonna be so wild, just wild. It will be humbling this coming. Yeah, season. that's what it will be. Who's ready for that? One dagger, one cup. It's not two girls. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh! I understood that reference. <laughs> <laughs> all right um, uh, that's actually the end of the written agenda there for about meta analysis what uh what other matchups or what kind of situations you guys looking forward to seeing next three versus three turn your thoughts to the future we have some yet unnamed unknown oh, set that will man. be with us so I, I, based I don't even on what care we about do that know, dude I, i'm do? so well, excited for remnants that is, oh if you yeah, want to talk yeah, about yeah, that, yeah. so awesome with the dude. super troopers, dude. Man. It's just so good that even They're even gross. like like doing Morgan and doing that event, I was like, man, this is so goddamn boring. Man, I'm so oh. tired of doing the Morgan. But coming in every day, I have so much fun playing with the pooper troopers, and and you're getting a nibble, the big bangs and all that. It's so mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. The new death trooper like reminds me of my. Reminds me of my boy, where he just like throws himself on the ground, prostrate, yeah. right? Like yeah. he's just like no, no, no. Yeah. You got you got just, one oh who's still got temper tension, one who's yeah, just shit. absolutely <laughs> fantastic. The animations just, on this team, yeah. the animations it, for both of these new troopers are just a plus, and, and, and they're just oh. so they're just so like high caliber damage, right? It's like yeah. how much damage am I gonna pack in? And they have a great combo pack of you put the debuffs, you have a dude who works off the crit damage, and then it's like. Where did all the characters go? Man, it's it's just fun because it's turn one death. It's just great. Are, are we going to be scheduled to have Enoch by next threes? Is that something uh, where we're going to have that so, the full the So full we're going to have both Knight Enoch sister. and the, we're going to have the new Night Sister Prio and Enoch, I believe. Every two weeks, buddy. Just, just weeks. take, just take next every next two weeks, weeks as a okay. character. So I would probably yeah. assume that's safe. Okay. Worst case, we get it during week one, and we'll have it for weeks two and three. I mean, that tracks, right? Because uh, as you were yeah. as you were saying earlier, Dagger, uh, Dagger, we're expecting Night Sisters in the next Datacron set. So well, you, well, we they already said we're gonna have Night Sisters in the next Datacron. Yeah. I think we're mm-hmm. also expecting Remnant and Rebel Fighter. Mm-hmm. I would expect uh, that. That's mm-hmm. pretty safe. Just, just a quick kind of aside. We're all planning to just start. We're just going to slam Luthen with like Kyle and like uh, Saw, right? I mean, the support, support. That's that's going to be nuts, dude. It's already right. nuts with Rex. It's yeah, that's I, basically our plan. I don't think it's groundbreaking to say that Saw is much more interesting as a defense than Mon Mothma. So yes, especially with that yeah. cooldown reduction and and the fact you can't stop it from happening. Really, yeah, that mm-hmm. that, that tracks, man. That team is also going to be so fucking fast. Yes, yes. And that summon trooper is a manly man. Do not get oh, it twisted. He's not some ability engine, you know, boosting everybody else. He, right. he actually kicks ass on it. And then that, he looks like he, are you saying he looks like he's straight out of a Chuck Lorre TV show? He, he is just, like, diving in out of a chopper like a madman. He, he's, um, he's Charlie Sheen before the tiger blood. I am telling you. <laughs> Uh, when he just like firebombs everybody, he will create a sunless space. You get that? If if we're talking about it, if we're talking about the sisters, because it's what two weeks, so we've gotten Peridia, so we should be getting the next. Night Are you reading the Night Sister? Are you reading the Night Sister Woman first? 
Does that make a little more sense to Those me? Those sisters, I, I'm interested to see what the, the great mothers do uh, as the triple threat. Um, I'll, bet, I'll bet each one has a very unique. I'll bet every. And, and, I'll bet every ability that they have basic special. I, I, I think they're gonna be really unique. cool. Yeah, I, I really. Yeah, they've, yeah. they've just been nailing these kits, right? Mm -hmm. So if you really want to see it, I've seen Elsbeth in action. I think I know uh, Sasha talked about it, and I think it was a smart idea. She, in her uh, setup right now, that ability to to get the frenzy going and watching how fast that hits you. Knowing what spa, spirit can do, I think it's. I don't think people understand uh, when she's in action how strong Morgan really is. Um, she's obviously not getting the full thing, right? We're not getting the full. But I played her uh, with a good setup on a good defense cron, and she was a monster to get rid of. Um, I took, I overkilled it obviously because I had the ability to do that. But watching how long it took me to take her down with these defense setups, she is built really well. Uh, and can sustain a lot of damage and has the speed to back it up. So watching all of that with that frenzy tie-in, I could imagine you putting the turn order correct with these mothers, and then it's just bam, bam, the the amount of damage coming in, and then the mothers go, and then that that back-to-back. -back, I think we're going to be surprised at how well this holds with just this set because we're getting the character so quick right now. It's like the last year setup of we had ships coming at the same time of Galactic Republic. Well, now we have the other character coming in, the confrontation character coming at the same time of a Galactic Legend. And we're getting every two weeks. It's like clockwork right now. You know a character's coming, get ready for your vault, get and ready to still, buy your we character. Still, we still have three more marquees left this quarter. Oh, and we dude. know two of them. Yeah. And that means we have an unknown marquee and we apparently have a chase as well. Yeah. So it's it's just I, I think I think people are going to sleep on how like Morgan didn't look good at all, in my opinion. The, the, the remnants looked and felt amazing, mm -hmm. and it's already off track. Uh, I don't think people are going to understand, and I've called it before, and I know Sasha called it, and I think it's great. Spirit was a monster when Relics first came out. Spirit was starting to delete characters because of the fact you could hit under. I think people are going to... I, I, get, I can imagine fighting Sasha, because Sasha will do some tricky shit, as he did to me with Tuskins. I'll never let it go. Sasha, you will sit and die on your Phoenix. Thing. Doesn't wait, hold on. Doesn't Spirit ignore defense? Yeah, it's that just, is the key. It's ignoring yeah. defense. That's it, right. But there's so yeah, much but, foresight and no, no, the it's frenzy. Funny. It's funny because if you guys remember, they went out of their way to remove everything that ignored defense from the game except yeah, for Spirit. Sure. Yeah, and, right. but she, she's such a glass cannon, and the fact that you get the foresight and get to start it off that building with Morgan. I, I'm even on a three v three team. I think we're going to be sitting here talking about it next time it comes around with those great mothers and Morgan mm -hmm. and Spirit and go shit. Obvi Man, there's I got deleted. There's obviously speculation, mm -hmm. um, but I wonder how good these night sisters are going to be next three v three because I think you're going to be able to get three teams out of them. Ooh, I think, I think. amazing if true. If that's like, I mean, certainly just like how we had that three way resistance split for like the life of set fourteen, I could absolutely we're see that Kron. being the case. Yeah, we're going to have Kron is my point. So if we're yeah. going to have Kron, yeah. I could. That's why I said I can't speak. To the future, but I think we're gonna have the yeah. great mothers and we're gonna have night sister crons, mm -hmm. and I think we're gonna have like Dude. you know, right? Remember when it was with initiate had her cron and she was just like yeah. one yeah. five in GL, yeah, it was so cool, man. It was yeah, it, it, but I was so jealous when it did with with Heinz and everybody do watching it take out, like it's just like watching it come in and man, she just kept popping you, and it's like, no, just use this, this kills Java, it's okay, you'll be fine. I, I saw Tass recently took his last night sister to relics, it's about goddamn time, um. But, it, but yeah, I, I definitely took yeah. all my night sisters to R seven in preparation That's for awesome. this next set because mm -hmm. my my I don't like night sisters. I think well, let me phrase that. I don't like the old versions of night sisters. I think the infinite revive was cheesy, bad game design, and toxic for the game overall. Mm -hmm. These new night sisters, like more, I love that Morgan says that they can't revive because now it makes interesting gameplay exist. For Night Sisters, mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna tie it, or I'm gonna see Tass. Tass will BT1 2.0 his spirit. I'm, I'm telling you now. Yeah. Tass loves modding. Watch he Tass with his spirit. I, you know, uh, and then also the one who's it's, not talking right it's now. Funny that you I will be, her because she's actually be, hot on yeah, deck to get my next relegate. Yeah. But but I will call the Night Sister Godfather Fatal, who has done so much. Not here. Yeah, that's this guy. <laughs> This, this guy who, who can't have a daddy, it's okay. Uh, but Fatal, <laughs> what will Fatal do with it? Because like I said, nobody was really chilling on Jabba until Fatal came in along and said, no, this is possible. Look at what we can do. Same thing he did with Treya. He's done it with other things like that. This is killing LV, who lives on debuff. It's like, so 
watching what this team will do, I, I'm excited to see how people are going to mod their spirits and see what it's like. Oh, no, this is taking out full mm -hmm. under pressure JMK or something mm -hmm. else that's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, and the only other piece I'll end with, too, is Dagger's Riot. I didn't even think about the Kron setup, but these Krons are really good for the Night Sisters, as is. These level sixes with the tank, with the long, the support that builds up because there's so many supports. The attacker twice, like that spirit doing. So it's like that combo yeah. pack of what does it have? I, I didn't even think about that, but yeah. There's a lot of utility for both sides. Elvin's unique that applies the plague. So she's going to be doing all that like debuff spreading, debuff inflicting with a support cron. That's true. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's actually her unique spreading the plague. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah. I, that's what, like I said, I'm also excited for Night Sisters just because like. It's a faction I've historically disliked, and th they're going to be playing fair to a degree now, and I think that that's yeah. going to be fun. It's the same reason Joe Lee's fucking AIDS, right? Like, we can all agree that Joe Lee's, like, terrible. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Right, and but nightmares. now here we are. Here we are with Joe Lee and Barris on a Ray team where, like, you have to kill Barris twice, then Joe Lee twice. Like, I'm not looking forward to this shit. I'm just going to slack her that bitch. Like, I know we're not talking about 5v5 in this yeah, one, yeah. but, like, mm -hmm. I I'm just pointing out in general, it's like, we didn't need Jolie to be better, guys. We don't need this revive bullshit to be just like. I, I get that it is gimmicks on Krons, but can we just like not make teams infinitely revive? Because that's mm -hmm. annoying. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess I guess that going back and I forgot about that. You said favorite defense, and that's the one we dapped about. And then Dagger walked into the room. And it was like the, no, the JML yeah. with the Jolie <laughs> and the Zaris, and like we didn't even talk about it, right? And it's funny because I was like, yeah, I'm talking about putting JML on defense, mm -hmm. and, and so he's like, and I'm well, like yeah, Jolie Zaris. Do yeah, I'm like, hey, without even talking to him, I was like, yep, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yep. That <laughs> just it, 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 that is an absolute STD. That is an oh, absolute toxic, fuck you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like that was probably my favorite defense because it got five holds round two because I knew there was like you're not you're just not ready for it. And if you let one thing slip and let Jolie come back, it's oh fuck. Team. But it's it's, 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 it's if you don't have the right team. thing, if you don't have the right thing, it is the ultimate toxic setup. Okay. And it's just well, like I know. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, guys. Um, any other notes you wanted to throw in here on on your thoughts about the next three versus three season when we wind back around? Remember that bulk is gone, and even though we don't know what the next set is going to be, uh, this will come out while Conquest is still going. Make sure that you pick up some crons for teams that already exist, because yeah, I think that's safe. Like, like like we we talked about a few teams where like these these current crons we have are going to be pretty good on them. To certain degrees, mm -hmm. um, so do some. We don't, we don't, we don't really talk about this enough. I don't think on this last episode, but there is some amount of prep that has to go into the next three v three during these couple weeks in conquest because you may have to develop a cron or two for a specific team you won't use in fives that you will use in threes. That's so, a good idea. Even, yeah, for for any yeah. of your stalwart teams that have been on defense that have been using set fifteen. Take a moment and consider how you'd like to see them set up next season and uh, mm -hmm. plan accordingly, farm accordingly. That's, that's a good one. I mean, we can go ahead and kick off the final thoughts then. And, I mean, uh, that's fine, Dagger. Did you have anything else you wanted to include oh, for the people? Sure. Sure. No, I was just thinking just, like, strategy in general. That wasn't that wasn't meant to be, like, a five-up. No, 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 because I, I was literally saying segment. that was, like, last call for that segment, and that, that seemed oh, like okay. a pretty reasonable transition here towards the, the end of the line. But, uh, yeah, oh, do man. you have a final note for the people? Anything else? Yeah. I mean, we're going to have a really fun in-between episode. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a lot to talk about. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. um, and, man, I am really looking forward to Fives because I think this is – Fatal mentioned earlier. I think this is one I think this is one of the last Fives we're going to have for a few months where defense is going to matter. At least, like, you know, traditional defense is going to matter. Where I mean, there'll obviously be like a data cron or two that matter, but yeah, I, I really like I really like this last three v three months meta because it wasn't overly cheesy, it wasn't yeah. overly toxic. Mm -hmm. A lot of the toxic, super toxic teams were like four man teams. Yeah, so you couldn't like do the Ray Ben Jolie Zaris thing in threes, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> like you can only do so much with these like uh, attacker support crons, and I look forward to what we can do with them in fives. Like I said, like. Trying out, uh, you know, the the support cron on Jar Jar, or as Fatal said, 
that the support cron is already overperforming on Queen Amidala, right? Yeah. It's I I look forward to all of this stuff because it's we we, we really do learn a lot from three v three with the first set being three v three because we get maximum reps, right? We have more teams, um, we have this, that, and the other thing. Mm -hmm. It, it mm -hmm. I. I, I, I've been really enjoying Datacrons recently, and I know we talked about how we like them a lot, and uh, I hope that everyone else has been enjoying them as much as we are. Very fair. Very <laughs> fair. How about you, uh, TJ? Your final uh, thoughts, your last word for the folks. I, I think it's one one rip to SLK. He did such a good job with this set, and that was he was the ultimate either mm. destroyer of worlds, and, and, and that's, that's now gone. We all... So we all can be sad with the SLK that went away, as well as Padme. I think so you get to enjoy it is, for one more season of fives. But yes, pour one for the homie Slacker who will not be it, as powerful. Same thing for come dude, next same thing for Padme, no, right? No, Padme no, Slacker so, has the attacker cron. You can eat shit. It's, it's gonna not going to be. It's dude, not as dude, powerful no, as okay. His I'm first sorry. move deletes everything. Fight you swipe, ends. When you swipe, people fade. That's it's, it. It's like yeah. literally Thanos. That's He's just Thanos gone. You. you were there, yeah, and then you are dust. Everything. And if you get it on defense and you couldn't take care of the timing, you were gone. So it's like that's he right. was the ultimate Thanos snap. Let's not let's not twist it. Yes, that's he had right. an attacker, and that's that's cute and that's fun. That was the leader, the the leader of worlds, right? Mm -hmm. That's I'm sorry, man. That's not even effective. No, yes, okay. but not not the, not nearly so, the same raid boss. So anyway, so it's like pour one out for the SOK who was the man of mans in threes. Yeah, he'll be in fives, but yeah. Uh, the other thing, um, I think Dagger calls it very well. Prepare yourself for what it is. Prepare thy anus for what may be to come because you just never know what it's going to be. Um, and especially when we get to threes, man, we are going to be back to the frenzy of, oh, shit, new set, get ready to deal. Uh, and whoever's caught up will have the good, have the goodness, and then we'll have the good new characters, and I think we'll have the good new teams. Um, so for sticking two threes in that theme, just, just prep is going to be key that you go in because we're going to start seeing the fruition of what uh, all these – characters are going to be and i think the defense is going to look uh readily different than anything we're seeing now and i also want to echo the sentiment from dagger on specifically the defense did feel strong defense came back in a way where you you know you could try to do the cheese but it just wasn't strong enough because you could get messed up mm -hmm. um so seeing the defense was a key thing again was nice it did feel good again that it wasn't this cheesy bullshit of uh, just this you can actually put things on and it's gonna hold it's gonna do something different to you so I, i'll leave it for that all right mm, that's good that's a good one sasha aisha sir how about you yeah. your final thoughts your word for the people uh i i still feel pretty good that this current set uh 16 that will stick around for the next three years brings uh, a, a good amount of defensive viability. I mean, I know some people can then just perhaps slide even further towards cheesing on their on their own to be more uh, uh, aggressive on offense. But I, I'm excited for that thing to stay. And um, I guess uh, one like little side note that that I'd add is I'm going to be curious to see. This is a small uh, like kind of corner case, but with Inquisitors, Inquisitors have been really pretty cool and uh, dangerous for like three Datacron sets now uh, where they've had something directly applicable, Empire, Ufu, and Inquisitorious. And um, I, I was wondering, I, I'm, I'm just going to be curious to see if next 3v3, if they finally have a season where they get pretty marginalized. And um, I do think, I mean, there's some, there are some pretty interesting things that set 16 can do for them. Uh, but uh, I mean, the bummer is, you know, they spread debuffs like crazy, but uh, you, I guess you could, I think it's fifth brother as a support. So you could potentially uh, have purge that he generates stack crit damage for everybody, but just bringing it up because I, I think as you just sort of watch the cycle of life of a lot of these different factions and squads that mm -hmm. uh, it'll be interesting to see if inquisitors take a step back. No, that's a good one. I appreciate that. Uh, Fatal, sir, your final thoughts, your word for the people. What you got? Yeah, so I think uh, the biggest thing I'm going to miss from what hasn't been mentioned yet of set 15 and what I'm really looking at seven, set 17 to try to fill mm -hmm. is Crit Avoid. 
uh, like I said, I think 2024 so far has been the year of crit chance. And it's not only crit chance and crit avoid, but, you know, those stats especially. There's just... CG has been pretty deliberate about printing characters with holes in their stats that they... I mean, I don't know if it's what they want, but at the very least, the kids are signaling, hey, if you build it, you'll get something extra out of this character. Hmm. And when it comes to dealing with set 16 and whatever gap set 17 is going to have to fill for me, I do look for crit avoid to deal with how much support cron shenanigans have been going around. I see. I mean, you know, I was my solution to salt teams this season. It's actually probably overkill in some ways, but I would just slap trail lead with a, uh, crit avoid and scron just because, Kyle Katarn has 55% base crit chance, and people very rarely even take him past, like, 70%. Mm -hmm. And so, just kind of understanding the lay of the land of how many characters are kind of trying to play the crit game right now, that their owners might not be doing due diligence to ensure that they can actually try to tap into it, mm -hmm. I think presents an opportunity, and that's probably something I should explore more next season, especially because I'm going to be sending a lot of extra characters to defense, probably irresponsibly. Very fair. Very fair. I believe you. I've seen uh, plenty of it just this season. Um, for my part, I am panic farming, guys. Um, you know, with the Night Sisters coming in the way that I expect them to, I've been preparing these weak ones. Dagger already caught me, called me out that I'm, uh, you know, TJ observed that I'm thinking about spirit. Like, I'm, I'm preparing them in the background, but I'm recognizing that I'm a little tight on my crit damage and offense mods right now, um, but actually worse than either of those is, in fact, crit chance. And as Fatal mentioned, I do find myself being a little pressed for crit chance. I actually have great crit chance secondaries on a lot of my health you sets. Bum. I use you I use bum. health sets in their place. Even so, I'm getting taxed. I just don't have enough of them, so it might just be easier to go straight for uh, crit chance mods themselves, balance myself out, right the ship. So I say that um, to the folks at home in the sense that if you are going for the Night Sisters, consider that you've got them, you know, decently well set up. I hadn't spruced mine up in literally years, so worth taking a look at. And if you're not going with them, check on the teams that, like we said, you know, the ones that you were using that were stalwarts of set 15. Think about either A, the set 16 cron that you think uh, is going to make that kick and go for it. Make sure you have it. Or think about who you might be looking to rotate in and... If you have any modding-related holes, this type of off week, this moment that we're in right now, is when I do all my panic farming for a specific character. Uh, in this case, it's like three Night Sisters that I'm like gobbling different kinds of mods to, to put together. Well, if we're talking so, about gobbling and filling holes. I can you know help you out with that. You I'm know, sure I got something can. for you. I'm sure you can. Yeah, you. Uh, Man, I got the the number, the number and the fury of the low blows that are just like <laughs> that are that are ticker taping through my mind right now. My man. Level. You won't stoop to my level on the podcast. Man, I know that. just and just that's... you wait till the camera's off, you son of a bitch. <laughs> All right, but uh, yeah, that's a that's about it for you. Sorry, go ahead. You have something to say? Oh no, I was just gonna add on that. Uh... When in when in doubt, these new marquees take a trip to Tasnix's cheap empor cheap crystal emporium, and maybe look into getting a remod while you're there. Mm. <laughs> that guy. It's not going away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not going to re-record mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. Sneaking mm -hmm. in at the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Um, that about wraps this one up here. Before I go ahead and do the sign off, we have to acknowledge the other content creator in the chat. Fatal, give yourself the plug. Where can people find you? Yeah, twitch.tv slash playbook TV towards the last hour of each GAC round, usually. And then, yeah, doing kit reveals and, you know, whatever interesting stuff CG puts out to discuss. I'm usually mm -hmm. streaming it. Right, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I know. Um, I know you said you were thinking about eventually going back to starting making some YouTube content. Where are you at on that? 
Uh, I got kittens, and so yeah. So that's just I, completely I, I, foobard for the foreseeable future. I mean, I'm I'm trying to just spend. I'm I'm burning my free time with them. In the you have to days. love the just kitties. Uh, you yeah, get yeah, no I'm, argument from me. I'm I'm building bonding. I'm you know laying the groundwork, but I'm also, I mean. Yes, I, I am trying to set things up now, A, so that I can childproof my office so that they won't kill themselves in here, because right now mm -hmm. it would be easily done. And then B, uh, making sure that I'm using the time where, like, okay, they're very clearly just, like, asleep. Aww. I can sneak away and, you know, do what I gotta. That's fantastic. So, I, I, I'm not setting any promises yet, but it's definitely at the forefront of my mind. There's a lot that I want to do. It, yeah, well, it sounds like it's definitely not sooner than, I don't know, probably two or three months from getting to the, the top of the stack at this point. Because I know what kittens are like with that, so, yeah. I promise nothing, but uh, I, I think I'm going to swing big if I do swing. Dig so. it, dig it. We we'll will see. keep our we'll eyes see. open. All right, guys. Uh, yeah, so if you want to, you know, for all the folks at home, if you want to catch me live, uh, twitch.tv forward slash Tassinix. Of course, uh, the Plotting and Scheming podcast is found here on my YouTube channel, Tassinix Gaming. That's also uploaded to Spotify, uh, repeated out to uh, Google Podcasts, and also um, I found that uh i had a really let me shout him out actually because this guy this guy deserves it he did a public service here the other day um had a viewer come on now where is that schnookums schnookums uh popped into my twitch chat the other day and said you know he'd love to catch plotting and scheming on apple Podcasts, but they made it such a bear for me to get done i'd pretty much abandon the effort and he pointed out that you know if you guys just take the rss feed link you can actually look that up in your Apple Podcast interface, uh, plug that in, and listen to the show there. So I have pinned the message on how to do that in the general channel on my Discord. Check that out if you're interested. Appreciate you guys following the show. But yeah, also on the YouTube channel are some other you know sort of related content you might be interested in. My Datacron set videos on sets 15 and 16. I make those with Aesop Rock, one of the very best players in the game. Of course, we'll be making one soon, very soon here for set 17. Looking forward to that. Uh, I also have all of my VODs from my previous streams uploaded with chapters added for easy browsing. It is the full length of the VOD, but you can, you know, click right through and get where you're trying to go. Uh, and then, of course, I do have the mod guide videos. Uh, you guys started requesting those a couple months back. I'm going to keep them on going, covering in-depth on individual characters and their teams and how I think's a, a good way to get them set up. So really appreciate you guys' interest and positive feedback on that. It's been very encouraging. Thank you, guys. And, of course, uh, last but not least, if you love the show and you want to support what we're doing over here on the channel, uh, first, I did create a cash app because some of you requested it, so you can check that out. That's, uh, I think, dollar sign Tassinix is how that is. And then, of course, we do have the Patreon. So check out patreon.com forward slash Tassinix. For any upwardly mobile GAC player, there's something there of interest to you. $5 a month gets you in uh, a f your foot in the door to the TAS house. You get the early access to plotting and scheming, uh, dedicated text and voice channels where you can usually find me lurking. Uh, also, early access to the Datacron set videos. Can't forget about that. Thank you so much to the supporters here. Andrew, Arge, Brock Thud Steel, Deadpool Cow 28, JJ's Productions Twitch, Jobin4527, Johnny B. Ottawa, Ray's Malbus, Renee Bay Bay, Sam Bimes, Squed, Stark Strategy Gamer, Sweens14, and White Wolf. Stepping up to the VIP Access Plus tier, that's the $10 a month bundle, that's patron access to me, and to Omegabot Patreon. So if you like those detailed scouting reports I do on my opponents at the start of the stream, that's a patron level feature to be able to take more than two weeks of history and build out that custom report, get a powerful at-a-glance sense of your opponent's offensive and defensive tendencies. Thank you so much to Stryker and Esh Sotmacam for taking that offer. And at VIP Access Premium, $15 a month is the Double Bots Bundle. So patron access to me, OmegaBot, and to Hot Utils, the premier tool for your mass loadout and inventory management. Go through all your mods, switch loadouts between, you know, TB, TW, Grand Arena, just a couple of clicks. Uh, very powerful stuff. Thank you to Quig, Ibanek, Sir Boss, Funky, 
Focus, and General Milan. At the top of the heap, in Jester's Club Elite, is Nomad's Reaper, the one, the only. This guy will pop in the stream from time to time, drop hundreds of subs, thousands of biddies, just goes crazy with it. Really appreciate the generous support, my man. All right, and last but never least, our special thanks first to Yoda Force, one of my original supporters from way back in the day. He uh, got me the mic I'm speaking to you on right now. Though he has long since quit the game, we remember him fondly from the other side. To Mrs. T, my wife, thank you so much for helping out in the background, keeping our daughter out of my hair. Well, well, what's left of my hair? There's really not much left of my hair. Um, but keeping her out of what's left of my hair while I try to be halfway decent at a phone game. So thank you so much. And of course, to my co-hosts here on Plotting and Scheming, Dagger, TJ, Sasha Aisha, and Fatal, uh, a pleasure and a privilege to make this show with you gentlemen on a weekly basis. I really appreciate that you set aside the time to get it done, and we do get it done on a weekly basis. I love what we're doing, and it keeps getting better. I appreciate it. So thank you guys so much. All right, and we come back over to the main scene to say it's been a pretty cool season. Um, I do think that it is, I, I think we're saying it now uh, in a few different ways. The pendulum does feel like it's swinging. Like we've been enjoying a season, season and a half, maybe even full two seasons of defense feeling real. And now, I mean, here it was this last week. I dealt with, uh, with a, a cheese player, very good uh, efficiency player, but a cheese defense, no GLs whatsoever. Uh, and he's been stomping all season like that. And I expect we'll be seeing more of that in the very near future. However, we'll be having a lot of talk about how we're getting ready for this next episode of 5 vs. 5 here uh, come next week, so stay tuned for that. And until next time, it's been real, it's been awesome, it's been real awesome. Take care. <laughs>